the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Praised be Allah, Lord of the Universe. And peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, the seal of all prophets. Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Last time we discussed the verse that says, no compulsion in religion. Today we are going to talk about something similar to that. So uh, we are going to uh, deal with two verses or parts of verses. Now when the Prophet was, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was trying to uh, persuade the Meccans and other Arabs to drop the, uh, the worship of stones, idols, natural phenomena like you know, fire, the sea, and creatures like the jinn, like the angels. So when he was doing this, he was doing it for the sake of Allah. And that is why he did all he could, because it was his main job to do that. And he, being the last of all messengers, had to gain maximum following. Now, one of the main people uh, who were uh, concerned with his preaching was his uncle, Abu Talib. Now, his uncle had done a lot of essential things for him and, by extension, for Islam. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted him, he really, really wanted him to go to paradise. He wanted him to... Uh, declare his shahada, his confession of tawheed, oneness of God. And he wanted him to be a Muslim and then die. He insisted and insisted and insisted, but his friends, his the bad company, were there all the time telling him, beware of accepting Islam, beware of forsaking the religion of your fathers and parents and grandparents, etc. The religion, the religion of your people. And the guy wanted to accept Islam, but when he was with his uh, nephew, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Oh, son, you can use son, as a, a term of endearment, even though biologically the person is not your son. And that's not only in our culture, in the, the Muslim cultures, it's a universal culture. So he said, son, I wouldn't mind accepting Islam, but I don't want people to say he was afraid of death and he yielded to the pressure of his nephew. And then, he ended up dying not, not as a Muslim. He died non-Muslim. And the Prophet, of course, was very sorry for that. And uh, then the verse came down saying, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You cannot guide whoever you want. You cannot choose, we can choose who will be guided and who will not. That's in the hands of God. So this verse tells us that Muhammad, the one, the man who was, uh, who was supported by the revelation, by God, directly and indirectly through angels, he had this constant support. He did not have the key to the hearts. All he was able to do was to persuade, was to show the benefits of the religion of Islam. Beyond that, he had no capacity. If that is the case for somebody like that, what can we say about ourselves? There's no way we can choose, pick and choose. There's no way we can force people and there's no way we can decide for people. All you have to do is discuss. All you have to do is engage in a nice, friendly, relaxed 
dialogue, bring up all you can present in terms of arguing, in terms of ideas, in terms of logic, etc. But that's all you can do. Even if you are right and the others are wrong, it does not mean that they will be convinced, let alone if you are not right. So discussion is, a, uh, is an equation that has to be respected and we will have another discussion about that. The second verse is وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ This is in the chapter of Yunus, Jonas. This verse says, if Allah had willed, all people would have been believers. But Allah took it upon himself to give them the freedom to choose. And then, at the same time, guide them, show them, advise them. Allah is advising us, is guiding us, telling us this is good, that is bad. And then if we decide to uh, consciously, consciously disobey God, then Allah can punish us if he wills. He can still forgive us. But if he punishes us in that case, there's nothing uh, unjust about that. And if we choose the correct, if we take the correct option, Allah will, inshallah, uh, reward us bountifully. So, Allah says, if Allah had willed, all people would have been on the right path. And, of course, we understand from that, if Allah had willed, all people would have been on the wrong path. But Allah decided to give us the choice and at the same time guide us. So we have no excuse if we are not, uh, if we don't make the right choice. And he says, And he said again, جَمِيعًا At the same time, كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا So كُلُّهُمْ means all of them. And جَمِيعًا means, as, as a way of, of emphasizing this, means all of them. Kulluhum, all of them, jami'a, together, or without any exception. So, kulluhum jami'a is no, no, no exception. All of them, and maybe in unison. Jami'a can also mean in unison, together. But then Allah says, after that, أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ Would you then force people to be believers? It's, it's a rhetorical question that says, don't even dream of that, because when Allah wills something, there's no way it can be changed. Hence, the lesson is, again, if the Prophet, if the Messenger, the last of all messengers, who is supported by Jibril, by Gabriel, and by all the forces of nature, and by God himself, if he cannot force people, how can we even dream of forcing them? So. This verse is setting a rule for conceptualizing preaching and also a rule for judging people. You give advice as, as, as uh, best you can, but there's no way you can guarantee that people will listen to you and be convinced. Therefore, once again, it's all a matter of freedom. And then it is up to God to judge us. We don't have the keys to paradise, nor the keys to hell. We ourselves should hope to go to paradise without being sure that we will. It's all a matter of God's decision at the end of the process because we may, be, we may think we are right, but we may be wrong. And therefore, we have to be merciful to ourselves and to the others and accept difference even after trying to get together. Thank you very much indeed. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.